With the recent release of Pikmin 4's gameplay trailer, I've been starting to get really worried. Not about the game, of course. It looks fantastic. Well, with the exception of those captain designs. Seriously, what is going on here? I was practically jump scared when watching that thing live. People have rumors that this game is going to come out, like, very soon, so... Oh, That's what I heard. I, I heard rumors that it was going to come out the same month as... What the f***? But anyways, no. The reason I was concerned is because with every Pikmin game, specifically Blue Pikmin, have seemingly been becoming more and more irrelevant. And with all the new additions we saw in the trailer, Pikmin 4 might be the game to make them the most irrelevant they've ever been. I mean, let's really look at this. The Blue Pikmin's whole thing has always been their ability to traverse through water, right? So Pikmin 3 added the winged Pikmin that can fly over water. That was already a pretty substantial blow to my Blue Boys. But then 4 is adding Ice Pikmin that can freeze the water, allowing any Pikmin type to travel over water, and even if those weren't there, they're also adding this Yoshi's Island ass dog that apparently allows you to settle up all your Pikmin upon, and then just swim across the water. With these changes, the only case uses a blue Pikmin will have is grabbing items completely submerged into the water. Because keep in mind, as seen in Pikmin 3, if something is only partially in the water, winged Pikmin can still grab it. It's unfortunate because even before the Pikmin 4 trailer, blue Pikmin have already been the worst Pikmin type in each mainline game. That's a pretty big claim. So let's take a step back. To explain why blue Pikmin are comparatively worse, we need to talk about the benefits of other colors because without context, the ability of being the only Pikmin that could go in water seems like a pretty big one. I mean, water is like in every map. It's f***ing water after all. Let's start with Pikmin 1. The first entry saw three Pikmin types, red, yellow, and blue. Red Pikmin are impervious to fire and have a 1.5x strength multiplier. Yellow Pikmin can be thrown high and have the ability to carry bomb rocks. And blue Pikmin can go in water and have the lesser known ability to save drowning Pikmin given they are idling and are close enough to a drowning Pikmin. Some insane lunatics will try to tell you that red Pikmin are the worst type in Pikmin 1, but I'm actually going to go in the complete opposite direction and make an argument for why they're the best. A lot of people focus on their resistance to fire, overlooking the damage buff. In fact, I found out recently that seemingly a lot of Pikmin players thought the fire resistance was the only thing red Pikmin had going for them. So in that context, of course red Pikmin seem bad, especially in Pikmin 1, which has minimal use of fire hazards. But in a game where start to finish you're fighting countless enemies. Greater attack strength is nothing to scoff at. Look how much faster they can kill a Bulborp in comparison to other types. <laughs> Due to this, red Pikmin may not always be the ones you need, but they're always the ones you want. Conversely, when you pull out blue Pikmin, it's not because you're thinking, oh man, this is gonna be a great asset to my team. You pull them out because, oh, there's something in or past the water that requires blue Pikmin to get. Yellow Pikmin are the middle ground. Sure, they are needed for a couple of items that require their extended throw height, but if that's all they were, they would be the worst Pikmin type in Pikmin 1. In fact, Nintendo likely came to the same conclusion, because as some of you Pikmin fans might already know, there exist unused textures in Pikmin 1 depicting all Pikmin types holding bombs, despite the fact that in the final game, only yellows can carry them. They probably isolated the ability to yellows, because the ability to be thrown higher isn't that special on its own. At any rate, being able to carry bombs, as finicky as they are in Pikmin 1, is a huge perk. Not only are bombs needed to tear down stone walls, but they can be pretty helpful when fighting enemies, especially the final boss. Bombs are so useful for the Emperor Bulblax, in fact that you're likely going to have yellows in your party until the very end of Pikmin 1. Whereas blue Pikmin are completely irrelevant the second you finish that very first bridge in the final trial. That's their last case use. From there, you can just put them back in their onions for reds and yellows. That's why, in Pikmin 1, reds are the best, yellows are middle, and blues, while still required, are, in my eyes, the worst. And that really sucks, because Pikmin 1 is easily the game that utilizes water Pikmin the most. Then came Pikmin 2, which has reds, yellows, and blues, with the addition of brand new purples and whites. Purple Pikmin? <laughs> Well, I don't think anyone is going to be arguing that they're the worst type in Pikmin 2 anytime soon. Then the white Pikmin, well, they have the fastest running speed in the game, are impervious to the new hazard Poison, can find and dig up hidden treasure, and will deal a lot of damage to enemies if eaten. So much damage, in fact. An enemy as big as the Creeping Chrysanthemum will instantly die by just ingesting one. 
White Pikmin have a lot of utility. And while faster running speed and being walking poison pellets might not be as good as, say, the blanket 1.5x damage multiplier reds have, they're still a valuable asset to have on your team. Unlike blues, they're still a Pikmin type that you'll want a part of your party, since they are still valuable outside of situations where they're required. Speaking of being required, in Pikmin 2, you can drain water. So once you do that, then you never need blue Pikmin in that section that you drained ever again, making them even less useful. As for yellow Pikmin, Pikmin 2 got rid of bomb rocks, but added electricity, a hazard that will instantly kill Pikmin. <laughs> Pikmin that aren't yellow, that is. People whine about this, but I always thought it was cool because it creates for a hazard you were actually scared of. It's easy to be pretty careless around water, fire, or poison hazards. But you see that electricity, and it's like, oh shit, I gotta keep my distance away from that. Whether insta-kill death is a decision you agree with or not, the invulnerability to the hazard makes yellow Pikmin much better than blues in Pikmin 2. Not to mention, because of their throw heights, yellows come in clutch for many of the bosses in 2, whereas blues excel at none of the Pikmin 2 bosses. Finally, there was Pikmin 3, three that removed purples and whites from the campaign, and in their place added Rock Pikmin and Winged Pikmin. The existence of Winged Pikmin alone is enough to make Blues the worst type in Pikmin 3. While their design is... Uh, dumb? I mean, these somehow look less like Pikmin than the Pikmin that is literally a rock. The amount of situations a flying Pikmin is useful makes up for that design. More notably, they can fly over water, and as long as something isn't completely submerged in water, Pinks can accomplish many tasks that once upon a time only Blues could do. You might think they would also invalidate yellow Pikmin, but a lot of flying enemies, or enemies with an elevated weak point, are actually better with yellows than they are with pinks, since yellows are twice as powerful as pinks. Not to mention, especially with Pikmin 3's pointer controls and lock-on feature, yellow Pikmin, at least in terms of combat, might be the best they've ever been. Nintendo likely thought the same thing, because Bomb Rocks return, but are not exclusively used by yellows this time around. As for Rock and Red Pikmin, Rocks essentially replace purples in terms of how they are utilized in combat. I mean, any Pikmin that can deplete a health bar this fast? <laughs> not a bad Pikmin. Also, they cannot die by getting squashed, which is extremely helpful, especially if you play the versus mode as often as I do and hate that bullshit rock item. Then the reds are reds. Again, that 1.5 times strength multiplier has essentially carried them in every single Pikmin game. I almost forgot to mention that in Pikmin 3, they actually removed an ability from blues. In Pikmin 1 and 2, they can save drowning Pikmin. However, in 3, they do not do this. Again, coupled with the introduction of pinks, makes blues kind of a joke. Pikmin 3 sort of adds a new ability for blues, that is the ability to swim after enemies if you use the charge function. But this is truly only useful for water enemies that swim themselves, which when you consider at that at that point, we're referring to enemies such as the Puckering Binnows, Spuddlefish, and Wogpoles. Enemies that die in just a couple of hits anyway. Yeah, swimming isn't as much as a selling point as you would think. With the exception of those three weak-as-hell swimming enemies, in no situation are Blues the best Pikmin for any enemy in Pikmin 3. Only ever do they seem useful when an enemy is positioned in or around water, but water is an external factor. It has nothing to do with the enemy itself, and everything to do with the environment. In every situation, the second that Hermit Crawdad, our water dumple takes a step outside that water. Blue Pikmin are no longer the optimal choice to kill them. And enemies in the water aren't a concern to you or your Pikmin anyway. If an enemy is in the water, but you can't get anywhere near the enemy anyways because of the water, then at that point, that enemy really isn't a concern to you. The only enemy designed around being in water that can still affect Pikmin outside the water is the Skeeter Skate. But even for those, Blue Pikmin aren't the optimal choice to take care of them anyway, since they are above the water and have extreme extremely low health anyways. Winged Pikmin are actually the best choice to handle these guys. Otherwise, with Blue Pikmin, you're either forced trying to land blues on them while they're moving, or have to go into the water and charge them upwards, at which point there's still a delay because blues need to jump out and then grab onto them, versus just doing this with pinks. <laughs> Ultimately, it all comes down to this. Blue Pikmin are nothing more than their case uses. If they weren't required for progression, there would be next to no reason to pull them out. Unlike every other single Pikmin type that has relevance even outside the requirements. Reds are stronger than average, yellows are great against flying, elevated, or long-range enemies, hold bombs in Pikmin 1, and are impervious to the most dangerous hazard in 2. Purples can stun enemies, have a 2x strength multiplier in 2, and count as 10 Pikmin when carrying objects. White Pikmin are the fastest and can poison enemies, pinks can fly 
fly over most anything, making them the best type to carry back items through complicated terrain, and are the most automated since they don't need to be thrown. And Rock Pikmin can bash enemies when thrown to deal significant damage. Everything I just listed had nothing to do with progression. Those were all perks that validate said Pikmin types even when they aren't required. Granted, most everything mentioned was combat related, but besides combat being a large majority of the gameplay in Pikmin, the thing about enemies is that unlike ship pieces, treasures, or fruits, enemies respawn, so Pikmin with additional combat abilities are always going to be nice to have, even when they aren't necessarily required to progress. Pikmin that are nothing more than their required use cases are not very good Pikmin. Any fan of the series will tell you how good purples are in the second game. They're often touted as the best Pikmin type and could even be argued they're too OP. After all, they can do this. <laughs> But when you break it down, they're only required for 3 out of 201 treasures. So they can't be that good, can they? Well, again, they can do this. So obviously they are. Purple Pikmin are good because even when you don't need them, you want them. Enemy staggering and carrying back heavy objects without exhausting large numbers of your army are two good of abilities to not want in your arsenal. It's no coincidence blues are the last type found in each game. Hell, that's half the reason they seem so good to begin with. A color like red, which is the first Pikmin you get, since you have them start to finish, you get a fair estimate of their usefulness. I'd argue that's why many players overlook them to begin with, despite how helpful 1.5 X attack power really is. But blue Pikmin, even though I believe they're objectively the most underwhelming. I mean, it's why I made this video after all. In every Pikmin game, when you finally get them, any objectivity is overlooked because the only thing on your mind is, oh damn, now I can get that and that and that. As a player, any item you can't get sticks out like a sore thumb. When that item is just out of reach because you don't yet have the means required to get it, you remember that shit. Which is why, by the end of the game, it all builds up in your mind. It's not a matter of whether blue Pikmin are actually good or not. It's a matter of you noticing each and everything you can't do because you don't have blues yet. Blue Pikmin have rarely been anything more than a tool the game requires you to use. Like a key to your house that shocks you when you touch it. You wouldn't want that around, but you need it to get into your house. All this being said, Pikmin 4 presents the strongest case yet as to why these blue boys need a buff. Something else that defines them and gives them versatility. Because when what defines blue Pikmin can be ignored, by Pink Pikmin, Ice Pikmin, and a dog, then what more are Blue Pikmin besides the type you need for the couple of things that will be completely submerged in water? But hey, I didn't write all this sh down without a suggestion of my own. So what can we do to buff Blue Pikmin? The lazy solution would be to add value to Blue Pikmin through the game world itself. You know, more bodies of water, more enemies that use water as an attack. After all, a sh ton of water is why Blue Pikmin specifically seem so good in Pikmin 1. But these things don't buff Blue Pikmin as much as they handicap other Pikmin types. If we're gonna buff Blue, it shouldn't be at the expense of other Pikmin types. We can return their ability to save drowning Pikmin like we saw in 1 and 2. Not sure why that was removed in the first place. Although even that is hardly enough. So when ruminating on what a buff for blue Pikmin would look like, I came up with this. Blue Pikmin are optimal underwater because they are the only Pikmin that can be underwater. But what about when they're out of water? When a blue Pikmin leaves a body of water, a water droplet would appear surrounding their head. This water droplet could serve multiple combat-oriented functions. Firstly, it would save them from one grab pinch, or peck type attack. For example, if a swooping snitch bug went to grab a droplet covered Pikmin, its hand would slip, removing the blue Pikmin's water droplet, but also not grabbing said blue Pikmin. This functionality would essentially act as a one-time defense against certain enemies, until you traveled into another body of water. The second perk would be offensive ability. For that very first hit on an enemy, an attack with a water droplet would have three times the strength of a normal attack, but again, only for that first hit. With these two abilities combined, not only would blue Pikmin be good in body of water, but around bodies of water as well. Not to mention, this would add a plethora of decisions a player has to make. You can keep dipping your blues in water after each enemy encounter, but this would be at the cost of time, so it would be up to you if that time is worth it to buff your blues. If you're speedrunning, you might not want to keep doing this if bodies of water are too out of the way. This would also add options in versus modes. If you have a large army of blues, it's in your best interest to bait your opponent near water, where you will have the upper hand, even if your opponent doesn't get a single one of their Pikmin 
in that water. From this idea, there's lots of easy ways to balance it as well. Is this perk too good? Well, then make the water fall off after a set amount of time, or make the initial attack less powerful. Is the ability not good enough? Then make the bubble last for two or three hits, or make that initial hit more powerful. The advantage of an ability like this is that blue Pikmin would still be designed around the integration of water in your environment, giving blue Pikmin a unique perk without taking away from what defines them. I don't want any of this to come off as me being like, I hate blue Pikmin, they suck, and if you like them, you suck too. No. Did you see the title of the video? This is me saying, blue Pikmin had the required use cases, but I want them to be more than that. I want them to have such a good perk attached, that even when I don't need to go in water, I will still be like, I want them in my squad. That's just my idea, at least. It could so happen that Nintendo has an even better idea. The way I see it, is that if they don't, and decide to do absolutely nothing to buff blues in the face of pinks, the new ice boys, and dog, blue Pikmin might be the most irrelevant they've ever been. And I really don't want to see that happen. But only time will tell, because you can bet your ass I will be there on day one to check it out for myself. Here's to hoping we see Nintendo buff my blue boys, and here's to hoping for a great fourth installment in the franchise. That one doesn't count. Hey, thanks for watching. My cat recently passed away, so I wanted to use the end of the video to immortalize her. She was a good kitty. I'd like to give a special thanks to patrons such as Pen Jester, Some Crazy Idiot, Ian, David Marchese, Awesome Games, Gameplayer1500, Kenzel TN, Drew Kellenberger, David Pacheco, Jeffrey P. Long, Victoria Mars, Amanda Guth, and Raleigh Batter. Again, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, have a good one.